Good morning and welcome back. This is Greybeard Gamifying and once again I'm glad you could join me. Now let me give you a very quick refresher and synopsis on part one of this video. To go fast, to go real fast, but GURPS say to go too fast, but to go is fast. What to do? How do we reconcile this? That's the question I asked at the end of part one because I had come to a problem. So there are two ways to handle Tuco's actions in this single turn. The first method would be to use the multiple attacks option from tactical shooting that I talked about in part one and treat all four shots as separate attacks. But as I covered in the end of part one, that won't work. That dog won't hunt. Because the rules say you can engage a maximum of two targets that way. And in any case, your targets have to be within a 30 degree cone, which again, if I did my math right, they aren't. The angle of separation between the outer targets, I figured to be around 50 degrees. So, survey says... The second method would be to treat his four shots as a single rapid fire attack with a rate of fire of four. But again, we come up against a rules wall. According to the core rules, you can't engage multiple targets with a rapid fire attack unless you're shooting with a rate of fire of five or more. Apparently, four shots in one second is just not putting out enough lead to cover multiple targets. On top of that, all the targets must again be within that aforementioned 30 degree cone. So that's busted too. In fact, the only part of the spraying fire rules that actually works out is that you must engage your targets in succession, either right to left or left to right. And since the second turn starts with Tuco's turnaround shot, that's exactly what he does. But according to the rest of the rules, in short, according to GURPS, including the optional rules from tactical shooting, Tuco can't do what he just did. And since, according to those rules, this action isn't even possible, there's not a lot of point in running the numbers and giving a final tally of modifiers. They may as well be minus a billion. Now, GURPS is indeed a very robust game system, and it can handle a lot of situations really well. But occasionally, the volume of modifiers that need to be accounted for can hamstring it. A lot of times, games allow us to do things that we couldn't dream of doing in real life. But this seems to be one of those times where it goes the other way around. We witnessed a reality that the game actually wouldn't allow. But we're not done. I mentioned Deadlands earlier, remember? Deadlands started out as its own game system, but over the years it has been adapted to several formats, including a D20 version, a GURPS version, and my favorite, a Savage Worlds version. Now, Savage Worlds, like GURPS, is designed to be a universal game system that can handle multiple settings with just some changes for flavor. But unlike GURPS, it is designed to reward the highly cinematic. The game's core philosophy is fast, furious, and fun. So let's drop Tuco into the Deadlands and see how he fares in that environment. Something tells me he's going to be right at home. The first major difference between combat in GURPS versus combat in Savage Worlds is that Savage Worlds, much like Dungeons & Dragons does, handles combat in six-second combat turns. Even the longest of Tuco's quote-unquote slow-speed run-throughs takes barely half that much time. So no matter which clip we use, no matter which of his run-throughs we use, it's all going to take place in a single Savage Worlds combat turn. That's going to make things significantly easier on us. Savage Worlds Adventure Edition, which is the most current uh, edition, allows a character to take up to three actions per turn, with each one beyond the first adding a minus two multi-action penalty to all of them. Each pull of the trigger is normally going to be one single action. 
So that means without bringing any special circumstances or abilities, right off the bat, plain Savage Worlds seems like it wouldn't allow this to happen because drawing would be one action, firing once would be a second action, firing twice would be a third, and that's all he can do. But we've got some special circumstances and abilities lined up. While GURPS has advantages, Savage Worlds has edges. And Deadlands features an edge called Fan the Hammer. This allows a gunslinger to fire up to six shots in a single action. So instead of rolling six separate shooting attacks, which would take you a minimum of two combat rounds to do, you make only one shooting attack that uses six skill dice. Basically, turning your single action revolver briefly into a fully automatic weapon. <laughs> Full auto. Now, considering how fast Tuco can shoot, I think that's completely fair. In addition, the rules state that each one of these skill dice that comes up with a successful roll can be applied to a separate target and in any order you like. The trade-off is that each of these dice suffers a minus four penalty to the gunslinger's shooting roll. In order to qualify for this edge, the character has to be of seasoned rank and they must have both an agility and shooting skill of D8 or more, which on the Savage World skill is a professional, highly competent level of skill. So let's go ahead and assume that Tuco has the Fan the Hammer edge and meets all the requirements. Now, there is an improved version of the edge that reduces that minus four penalty to a minus two. It requires agility and shooting both to be D10 or more, but the gunslinger has to have reached heroic rank. Now, while I'm definitely comfortable giving Tuco a shooting skill of D10, if not higher, I have to admit, since heroic is near the pinnacle of what a character can achieve, the only rank higher being legendary, Tuco's pretty damn good. But I just, I can't put him at heroic rank just yet. So let's stick with the basic version of the fan the hammer edge. That right there will allow him to get all five shots off in a single action. Deadlands also has the quick draw edge that allows a gunslinger to improve his chances of making the first move. Now, since the requirements for the quick draw edge are actually lower than the fan the hammer edge, we can safely assume that Tuco has that one too. However, like I mentioned before, drawing your gun is still considered a separate action, even if you're doing a fast draw. It's just that doing it in the same turn as shooting is considered a multi-action. That's gonna add a minus two to Tuco's minus four. So according to Savage Worlds, with some help from Deadlands, all five of Tuco's shots here are going to be at a minus six to each of those skill dice. Now the basic book gives the Colt Peacemaker, your 1873 single action army, a short range of 12 tabletop inches. Each inch on the tabletop equals two yards in scale distance. Now I've already placed the range at or near seven to eight yards. So that puts our shot easily in the short range bracket. So the base target number for his attack is going to be four. Now, a minus six penalty is pretty severe. Severe enough that without Savage World's ace mechanic, which allows you to take a die that got its maximum result, roll it again, and add the new roll to the old one for a higher total. Even for a high skill like D10, hitting a shot like this would be almost impossible to make. Yet we see with our own eyes that in the end, not only does Tuco hit, but he hits with all five shots. I think I did it. So without getting into things like weapon enchantments or supernatural abilities or any of the weird stuff, we do the weird stuff. How can we further improve his odds here? For starters, we can give him the trademark weapon edge. This is the Savage Worlds equivalent of the weapon bond perk that we've already discussed in part one. For the same reasons that he would qualify for weapon bond, he easily qualifies for trademark weapon. 
that would give him a plus one bonus. So now we're looking at a negative five. In fact, I'd say he's definitely earned the improved version of the edge. So let's increase that bonus from plus one to plus two, bringing our total penalty down to negative four. That's a lot better. But I think we can do even more and stay within the rules. When a man like Tuco stares you down, you tend to flinch. So let's say that the prelude standoff here counts as a test of wills, especially since Tuco is reenacting Clint Eastwood here. <laughs> I don't think it's nice you laughing. Let's just assume Tuco has won that test to such a degree that he has rendered all four of his opponents vulnerable. This means all attacks against them are at plus two until their next turn. So let's walk it through and declare all of Tuco's actions for the turn and get a final modifier tally. He's gonna use his quick... Dog! He's gonna use his quick draw edge to get an additional action card to make sure he can make the first move. See, Savage Worlds handles initiative in a very creative way. You get dealt an action card from a simple deck of playing cards and whoever has the highest tally makes the first move. The quick draw edge lets you draw a bonus card and pick the one you want. Let's say Tuco gets dealt a jack of diamonds and he thinks, I can do better. I'm gonna use my quick draw edge, get that bonus card and see if I can do better. Now he gets to pick the better of the two. But to make things even more interesting, let's say he drew the Joker. What? When you draw a Joker as your action card, it means not only do you automatically move before anyone else can, but you also get a plus two bonus to every action you take that turn. So when Tuco's turn begins, he'll draw his gun, there's one action, and he will make a single shooting attack. There's a second action. He's gonna use the fan the hammer edge to turn that single attack into a five shot rapid fire barrage. He's got a minus two multi-action penalty and a minus four penalty for the hammer fanning attack. To offset that, he's got a plus two bonus for his improved trademark weapon edge, a further plus two for his foes being vulnerable, and he's got a plus two from drawing the Joker as his action card. He's gonna roll five of his D10 shooting dice, plus his one D6 wild die that all heroes get, with a final modifier of zero. How do you like their map? Trying to hit a target number of four. Chances are extremely good that he is indeed going to be able to hit all five shots. And Honey the Dog agrees. It took a very specific combination of edges and circumstances to be able to do this, but we did do it. And we did it without having to dip into any of the weird stuff. It got weird, didn't it? Yeah. Like I said, Savage Worlds rewards the cinematic. In a lot of ways, it will never be as realistic a simulation as GURPS can be. But this time, we discovered a real world situation that Savage that Savage Worlds handled much better than GURPS did. So there you have it. Gamifying Tuco the Rat's fast draw gunfight gives us the following results. In Savage Worlds, using the right combination of edges and combat conditions, it is absolutely possible. But your character kinda needs to be a bit of a badass. In GURPS, the rules actually get in the way here and renders this particular Pistolero feat impossible to achieve without some judicious use of the Game Master's fiat. As always, this was a lot of fun. I really want to thank Tuco the Rat for letting me break down his video like this, and I want to remind you to head over to his channel, check out his other work. I'm really glad you could join me, and thanks for watching. Next time, I'll tell you about these.